We play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew here from MiniWorkingMe.com and welcome to this week's Sit and Talk or Ask Me Anything show where I just answer your questions. If you want to leave questions for next week, which will be for Josh and Lee, make sure you leave them in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, then there will be a link in the description where you go to leave your comments because we have them all organized in one place that, that way. Much easier. Anyways, I'm just going to go through the questions. Make sure you thumb up any other questions that you like because I actually answer the ones that are thumbed up first. We'll be doing this for about half an hour, and then the second half hour will be for our vault members. So our members only area, the sit and vault, and that'll be at the link below as well. So let's just jump right into this. Now I've got a collection of questions from both last week and from some that have been asked on Facebook as well. So I'm going to kind of alternate between those. I won't be able to get to all of them, but we'll just see what happens. <clears throat> our bigness. Matthew, it's finally Orktober, and I'm sure everyone is excited to see the orcs get a decent codex finally. Who will review the codex? Uh, Steve has probably shown the most interest in orcs lately, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's him that takes care of that kind of stuff. Will you demo or review the Speed Freaks game? I'm not sure about that. We are filming an entire season of Gorkamorka using the old Gorkamorka rules next week with uh, Cody Roo and, um, and with Mike. And we will be, yeah, with me, Dave, and those two. And so we're going to be focusing on that. Speed Freaks will be coming out sometime after that, so we may, I, I hope to demo it, I really do. It just depends on what our schedule looks like. Are you excited for a true war boss on a bike model? I know it's a different profile, but it's still great. Um, <clears throat> I think the orcs are really cool, but they're not really my army, so I can't say that I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited to play Gorka Morka, that's for sure. Are you ready for more Daka? Wah! <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, I just ate lunch, and so it's sitting there in my throat right now. Aaron, I really like the idea of a mini wargaming Dungeons and Dragons adventure. If you decide to do it, try reaching out to Wizards of the Coast. They do promote some of the larger streamers on their site, and you might be big enough to qualify. Yeah, it's hard to say because uh, we are one of the bigger miniature wargaming channels, but we're not really in the role-playing arena where there is a ton of competition there. I definitely want to do it because I think there is a place for role-playing games in mini wargaming, and I think D&D needs to be one of those just because it's one of the biggest. Uh, you might say, well, there's a lot of competition already for it, but there's a reason there's a lot of competitions because it's by far the biggest. But I also want, like, the way I envision it is that we'd have a weekly D&D show, and then in the vault we'd have some other role-playing games that we'd cover as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I just have to, my phone was buzzing right there. So I, I it's hard to say, though. We'll, we'll have to kind of see what happens. It's hard right now for us to even start it for, just for, time constraints and everything that's been going on, but I really do want to start a live D&D show and also have another role-playing show in the Mini Wargaming Vault as well. But I, I'm just not sure. I've been playing it at home. Uh, we've gotten into D&D 5th edition and I'm loving it, absolutely loving it so much. So let's have to sit tight and see what happens in the next few months for that. As much as I love the narrative campaigns and I really love the narrative campaigns, it'd also be nice to see more beat map bat reps happy wargaming. I know it's tough. When I do more narrative campaigns, and people want more beatmap bat reps. When I do more beatmap bat reps, people want more narrative campaigns, and uh, they just they just want more of everything that I make. And I can only make so much without burning out. Like I could I could make more. I will tell you that right now. But then you'd see me burn out every once in a while. So I'm trying to keep a pace that makes sense for what I can do. But Luke is going to be doing more narrative campaigns now. We've uh, with Miles Drake, our writer. Um, he's been writing some stuff for our last narrative campaign, so he's helping with the next one. So with that burden kind of lifted of having to do all the writing, uh, that allows us to have more time to do other stuff. So you should be seeing Luca and me doing more narrative campaigns, which will free me up for doing other battle reports like Beatmap Bat Reps, both Age of Sigmar and 40k. <coughs> miso Miso, hey Matt, how is Dungeons and Dragons going? It's great. How do you find the character creation and the rules compared to 40k and 40k RPGs, and how far are you through the adventures? Uh, compared to 40k, I don't know if there's one that's really character creation. 40k RPGs, well, compared to Dark Heresy, Dark Heresy felt very clunky, but Dark Heresy was designed for an investigation kind of game, and for that purpose, I, I, it's, it's, I don't really like it. But D&D's had years and years and years and years of... Um, uh, 
years, ah, sorry, I gotta put do not disturb on my phone because I'm getting texted over and over and over again and it's distracting me, I'm sorry. Uh, it's had years and years of development whereas the 40k RPGs obviously the, it was like second edition for Dark Heresy and the Fantasy Flight did great, uh, they did a great job on it um, but it's hard to compare. Uh, fifth edition just being this really, I find, a good culmination of their efforts of all the different editions, uh, streamlining things while still keeping the level of complexity and uh, things that are interesting. How far are we? We're playing, t I'm GMing, I am the games master or dungeon master uh, for the, our group um, and uh, we're playing the Tomb of Annihilation module which we're having a lot of fun with, it's really fun. And tonight uh, we're going to actually be starting, Luca is going to be GMing and we're going to be starting the Curse of Strahd module. Uh, I like the modules for a good starter just because it, it just kind of gets you into it and allows the GM to, it's a little less work, a little less work for the GM. Uh, there's still a lot of reading and prep time and all that kind of stuff, but uh, not home brewing it. it. gives you a lot more to do. It takes a lot off your plate. Uh, and then we're going to be alternating every other week to Annihilation Curse of Strahd. So every other week I'll be a player and a GM, which is the first time I'll ever really get to be a player. Uh, I've been a player in a couple one-offs, and that's about it. I've GM'd all my life otherwise, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Well, we've seen a mini wargaming, hopefully eventually. It would be quite cool if you tried some of the wacky OSR products like Maze of the Blue Medusa or Gardens of Yin. Um, and these ones I've already talked about. And how is the bunker doing? When, Matt, when? Well, construction actually started. So we've been told that construction should be done by end of January, beginning of February. We'll have obviously some of our own stuff to do, getting the panels in. So we'll hopefully be in there by uh, early next year. We'll see though. It's, but it, it is progressing at this point. For a long time it was all stalled because we were waiting for so much stuff. But now it's just progressing. So now it's not like we're waiting for stuff to start. It's just going. So it's just a matter of how long those things take. <clears throat> Korlak Juan. Hey Matt, I'm a big Middle Earth strategy battle game fan. I've been watching the Open Vault videos and have noticed staff are building up uh, Middle Earth strategy battle game armies to play in their own time. Would you possibly consider making one or two videos in the game to gauge the interest of it? Our plan is to do a bit of coverage of Lord of the Rings. Uh, I don't know how much, we'll, kinda, we'll have to gauge interest, but yeah, that is our, our plan. It's a great same system and has quickly become my favorite of the Games Workshop games, especially since the new edition dropped. I understand that putting aside valuable man hours to play games, yeah, we're going to be doing it, don't worry. Big Mikey. Hey Matt, hope your week is going well. It is. With all the content producers playing multiple games that you don't currently cover, do you think we could maybe have a semi-regular day featuring some of these games like Wild West, Exodus, uh, Lord of the Rings, Kings of War, etc.? Thanks for all you guys do. That's hard to say because um, they do play other games but uh, kind of infrequently. And so it's, it's when you just like show a game like here and there, it doesn't give it quite the justice of, of really getting into it nor does it really get any views for the video itself. And so, like I like to, I like to kind of go in and be good at something. And so I don't want to just, uh, you know, occasionally do something like that. I'd rather, if we're going to cover a game, let's cover that game. Let's get the miniatures, let's get the terrain, let's learn the rules, let's really get into it. And it's hard if you spread yourself too thin. So I'm not quite sure what the future is going to look like for all that kind of stuff. We have our sponsored content, of course, the companies that pay us to play their games, and we'll gladly do that for obvious reasons. It gives us more revenue to be able to grow our business and also gives you what you want, which is seeing other games covered. But I don't know what our future is for what we're going to be doing for that exactly. So you'll have to kind of wait and see. Bango Shank. Long-time viewer who actually got into 40k from you and your team. Well, awesome. Glad to hear that. It started with the first Death Watch campaign, and they are still my favorite to this day. Thank you. In your last talk, you said a bit about the bunker and using it to stage guest star campaigns that would span multiple days and videos. Is there a plan for such a campaign for Death Watch? Uh, there's currently no real plans for all the events. We're, we're going to wait till it's closer to being done before I put a lot more brain power into it. Right now, I've got to focus on the tasks at hand, and we're still months away from moving in there. But I would imagine so, yes. Being our most popular narrative campaign, I could imagine that being a popular request to come on in. So yeah, we're going to be running all sorts of events. That In my mind, we're going to be running campaigns, tournaments, um, workshops, and um, like narrative events, uh, boot camps, where you can come in and learn how to play, or paint, or both, all these different things. So it should be, there should be a lot of cool stuff going on there. I'm really looking forward to that. Corey the Bragg. 
Hey Matthew, if you could see one of the more ignored subfactions of Age of Sigmar expanded upon, like Beasts of Chaos, well that one just got a codex, or like Daughters of Cain, who would it be? Personally, I would love to see Maneaters become their own faction. Who wouldn't love an entire faction of mercenary ogres? Um, see, I don't think I would grab one of those ignored subfactions and expand on them. Like, I'd love to see Moon Clan Grots get more, and uh, and Iron Jaws, and a lot of the destruction stuff. But I'd love to see some new factions, and my, my, the one I always bring up is the human, it's basically the Imperial Guard faction in Age of Sigmar, where it has tanks and um, different guilds and all that kind of stuff. They call them Free Guild, and they actually do exist in Age of Sigmar, not in rules. There's the Free People, and there's Free Guild Archers and Free Guild this, but that's different. That's like old models being brought in. It's not the models so, so much of the problem, it's more the, if you read a lot of the novels, the cities all have these different companies of uh, free guild that, uh, that work with Iron Weld Arsenal and all that kind of stuff. And they, they talk about like cog forts and uh, like things like the steam tanks, but you know, redoing that. I would love to see them come up with a new faction for that, or at the very least take all the free peoples and Iron Weld Arsenal, combine them together, and then expand on that product line, kind of how they did with the Daughters of Cain. They took old models, added more. Um, and that kind of stuff. So I'd really like to see that. I think that would be interesting. Um, Fox Die. Hey, Matthew, I'm looking to get back into 40K, but I don't know anyone that plays or would want to. In the UK, the typical Warhammer shops seem to be really geared towards kids. Do you have any recommendations on how to start the hobby as an older player? That's tough. Getting into it is always hard. The Games Workshop stores themselves, of course, are going to be geared towards uh, younger players because they're they trying to get them in. And if that's what's happening at your local gaming store, there's not much you can really do about that. I've always been the person who has to get everybody else into the game. It's my lifelong curse um, that I would find a game and I'd get other people into it. So that, like I got Dave into it. I, we found it, my wife and I found it at the, the mall, and then I told Dave about it, and then he got into it, and I tried to get other people into it. So it's always, I've always faced that. And when I got into role playing, I was always getting other people into it as well. Uh, it's, I've never actually just entered, in, in pretty much my entire life, I've never, except for now with this business, I've never been the one to join a group. I've always been the one to start them. So you just got to be that. You got to be the one that tries to get your friends into it and um, gets them invested. Now, and, and one piece of advice I'll give to that is don't buy things for them. Always, always have them, you know, if they, you can u have them use your stuff to try it out, but in the end, they need to buy their own rule books and buy their own stuff. That gets them more invested in it and more interested. So this just might be what you have to do. You just have to kind of, you have to just kind of learn everything yourself and then try to get other people around you into it. Uh, Le Baron, 950. Mr. Matt, hope all is well at Mini Wargaming. I was wondering if you or your staff would ever do away games. What I mean by that is if you would travel to cities across Canada or North America in general to play regular games with vault members or others who can't necessarily make it to your studio. In any case, keep doing what you're doing. Love the content. No, not currently any plans for that. We might do it as a promotional thing sometime, but um, it's expensive. It's very expensive to do that. Traveling is expensive, so no, no uh, current plans for that. Starmex. I was wondering how I would use Adeptus Custodes in a Death Watch-like campaign. Well, the Death Watch, if you really look at it, there's the, the, the rules that I've developed for my Death Watch campaigns, you could insert any thing you want into there. So any Space Marines obviously would work in there. I just always modify so they have five wounds or six wounds on the leader. So you could just bring your Adeptus Custodes in there and... Uh, if you don't want to do anything, just use the rules as written and uh, try to figure out which ones that they'd have access to. Like, obviously there's one specifically to tech marines and all these different things, but you could, if there's some equivalent, you can use that. If there's not, then modify them or just don't use them. Uh, so I would, I w it just would take some minor modifications to make it work for Adeptus Custodes. Blason, hi Matthew, are you guys going to be holding on to the current mini wargaming space after the bunker is complete? No, definitely not. We wouldn't be able to afford to pay for the lease for both places. If so, what will be at the current spot? No. Also, can you explain the deal with people paying to come to the bunker? Is that for everyone or just people staying there? Thanks. Essentially, there's going to be uh, two aspects to it that can work together. One will be the actual rooms. So if you are a guest who's just coming in for battle reports, then you would normally have to stay at a hotel or bed and breakfast. Now you can stay at these bunker rooms. You can rent those. So that would be a revenue generator for us. The other thing is the event hall. We'll have a couple thousand square foot event hall. 
and we're going to be running events there. Like for example, we're going to be having a week long Death Watch campaign, and we need five players for that. And you, you, it, you, whether you stay at the bunker rooms or not, you would pay to be in that campaign. And you'd probably also be filmed somewhat as well, but you'd be up in that, that events area. Or we'd need like 20 people for a Gorka Morka campaign. Or we're going to have a 30 person Shades Fire thing. Like some of it's like the events that you'd have at your local store. The idea though is that, um, you know, these would be events that you would come in for and they would have all sorts of extra things that we'd be doing, especially like filming in our studios or just have access to cooler stuff as well. Um, and that's it. So you pay to come in for events, pay to use our rooms. We'd probably would be selling food as well. So it's more like a, it becomes like a, uh, and there's a store there too. There's a storefront to buy uh, miniature wargaming products as well. So it's it becomes like this uh, uh, a year long convention with different events being held all the time. That's the, yeah, that's the basics. If you think of it that way, then that's essentially what we're running. Um, Aaron, Matthew, the new mobile interface doesn't seem to have a link to d download the vault videos. Can this be fixed? Definitely. It's everything's, our website's under huge development right now. So if you see things like that, do me a favor, email devops, D-E-V-O-P-S, as in developer operations. So devops at miniwargaming.com. Or if you can't remember that, just email support at miniwargaming.com. We'll forward it with details of what it is that you need and what you're lacking and bugs that you find. Because there's going to be bugs right now. Um, Claude, hi Matthew, right now you have all the Vault content on Vimeo. Aren't you worried that if something happens to their website, you might lose your precious Vault videos? Are there any plans of making your own mini wargaming video player, or will you continue using Vimeo as long as it works? There's no problem because we back up all of our videos as well as them being on Vimeo. So if they ever went out of business, then we have backups of everything. It would be a pain. Using, making our own video player, we used to do that. It's a pain for a few reasons. One, the streaming costs are very, 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 very expensive. Vimeo is dirt cheap. Let's just put it that way. And Vimeo actually it does a really good job of making their player as friendly as possible. And I know some people will be like, oh, no, I have problems with it. It's not YouTube, remember. YouTube has a much larger budget. YouTube's goal is to make their videos streamable by everybody, while Vimeo's goal is to make sure they have the highest quality videos. I don't necessarily mean quality as in what the content is, although that is part of the case, but I mean like their encoding quality. And they do pull it off. They do have higher quality, but that can sometimes be harder on certain machines, especially older ones or maybe ones that aren't quite as compatible. Uh, you can run into issues that way. We're working on improving our Vimeo player because we can actually hack it a lot so that it can do things like remember where you last left off or you know autoplay in a playlist, all that kind of stuff. We do want to add that. Right now our focus is on other stuff, but that is on our list of things to improve in our website as we go along. But no, I'm not too worried about that. Let's switch over to a few questions from Facebook. Junus Oja, why have you stopped making 30k videos and battle reports? Now we haven't stopped, you'll see them occasionally crop up, but there's two main reasons, one main reason, two main reasons. One, we don't get as many guests coming in, challenging us to 30k. And two, because they haven't really updated it, and it's kind of stuck in 7th edition. Now some people really like that, some people hate that, but it feels kind of stagnant right now. We try to make sure we're covering what's current and what's in, in, uh, what is um, popular. And 30k right now just isn't that popular. I can tell you that. Our views and our Horus Heresy stuff kind of drifted down when 8th edition came out. And um, when, uh, unfortunately, one of the writers for Horus Heresy, he passed away. And that slowed down the release of all their new books. And so that we, we noticed that the, there was a big de decline in the interest for Horus Heresy. So that doesn't mean we'll never do it again. Because it's when new books come out and all of a sudden there's a bigger interest, then you can be bet that we'll be right there to, to cover more of it as well. Tony Allo, does the studio plan on having a Daughters of Cain army? Yeah, eventually. We've just added tons of models to our collection. We currently have another wave of tons of models being added to our collection. So we're working on having everything. So Daughters of Cain will eventually get done. Connor Dello, as someone who is getting back into Warhammer, what would you recommend for paints, brushes, and the hobby supplies from a zero base? I have no idea. I don't paint. I don't do a lot of the hobby end of the things. Um, I do a lot of the gaming, obviously narrative stuff, GMing, running a business about it, but I don't like to paint, so I don't know anything really about brushes. So, uh, yeah, when it's Chris's turn, ask him. Andrew Lawless, is there a plan to do more Kill Team content? Yes, we actually have another Kill Team campaign uh, scheduled to be filmed. It's going to be 
Dave, myself, and two other content producers. Still working on who those two will be between Steve, Luca, Quirk, and Josh. Everybody wants to do it, but we only want four people. Um, Dave is going to be playing the Gellerpox Infected from the Rogue Trader team. I'm waffling what I'm going to play. I don't know yet. And there's, if it was Josh, it'd be Death Watch. If it's Quirk, it'd be Harlequins. If it's Luca, it would be, I think he said Necrons, and Steve would be Orcs. I don't remember exactly. But we're planning on starting to film that in a couple weeks, so you should start seeing it coming out, coming out soon. Would love to see Quirk and Harlequins do some damage. Well, that is on my list of potentials. Um, Sean Fleming, have you tried the overpowered Grey Knights and Kill Team yet? What will be done to equalize their power? I haven't, but I've read their rules, and I'm like, they do seem really good. Now, mind you, they're only one wound apiece, so they will die easily enough, because they cost the same as like Primaris Marines, but they only have one wound instead of two, which is a big deal in this. But the fact that they can all cast Cybolt, doing all those mortal wounds, and, um, and they're very strong you know, with their close combat weapons and their pistols and stuff. Um, they do seem like they'd be very strong. But I haven't played against them, so I don't know how overpowered they are. And they're not on anybody's list to play in our Kill Team campaign, so I don't really have to deal with them. Shane Tupman. Hey, Matt, now that you've played some Age of Sigmar, what army do you think you will collect? Well, I collect them all. If you're asking more which ones I'm most interested in, we just started filming a Firestorm campaign. Firestorm. It's a map-based campaign with four of us. It's uh, me, Steve, Luca, and Kenny. And we each captain one of the Grand Alliances, and I wanted to do Destruction. So you'll be seeing me play Iron Jaws, Moon Clan Grots, Spider Fang Grots probably is what I'll focus on. I really like the Destruction armies. They kind of call to me the most. Um, Aaron Cotter says, who's your favorite employee and why is it Aaron? Aaron, you're the best because you work so hard. You've been with us the longest. And no matter how much you might complain about doing a task, you do it well anyways. That's why I like you, Aaron. That's why you're my favorite. John Wyatt, which is your favorite new orc buggy? I don't know. They all look pretty awesome. Uh, so I don't, I don't have a favorite. I, I honestly don't. Um, Tyler Bortel, what is the current state of painting tutorials on the site? Um, we've stopped doing the quick tips on a daily basis because we have like 1,100 plus of them. Instead, Chris and Janine are working fervently to create this really, really awesome painting academy, which will be coming out soon. And then we're going to be doing, we're going to start a program where we actually have group and personal one-on-one -on -one sessions with Chris so that you can have him tutor you personally or as a group, small groups, uh, to help you learn more painting. Plus, Silver members will continue to get access to the 1,100, 1,200, 1,300 painting tutorials that we currently have in there. And we're going to keep working on trying to reorganize them in ways that are, that are easier to find. So that's currently what's being worked on. And, okay. Joshua Davis, what is your criteria if you're adding new games to the channel? Do you take suggestions? We get lots of suggestions. We don't usually take them because our criteria is twofold. One, what is popular there, and, one, and two, what do we want to play? That's really what it comes down to. Robin Benison, what are your ultimate long-term plans for the future of Mini Wargaming? Well, the bunker is the next big thing. So I'd love to see the vault continue to grow. Um, there are challenges there, of course, because the market is only so big. And um, there's a lot of people making videos right now. I, I'd love to see the bunker grow, the vault grow. Eventually, maybe make our own miniature game, but that's really not anywhere near the radar on our radar right now. It's 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 an idea that's like that's kind of on the list of things that maybe one day we'll do. Right now, it's all about creating this awesome bunker. That's our that's our current thing. So, what's our future plans? Long term plans is to make that really successful while maintaining the success of the vault, so that we can continue to expand, hire more people, play more games, cover, make more videos, host more events maybe buy more buildings so we can expand the bunker to be something bigger. That's really getting ahead of myself right there because we're just barely moving into this one right now. Michael Meyer, is there any plans for Blue Collar Heresy Season 2? Not right now. Um, I liked it, but uh, if we do get into role playing, the first thing we do is D&D. There's the Age of Sigmar and Fantasy and 40k RPGs that are coming out or have just come out. And so there's a lot of possible things for us to do before we start really going out further. Okay, let's go back to people who left comments on the site. Hold on, where did I put those? Oh, they're right here. 
Claude, sorry, I already asked one question. That's okay, but I always forget to ask this one. What is with the hi J meme? I see people saying it when they roll one sometimes. J is a former employee of Mini Wargaming, and uh, he's got like one of his one of his eyes is kind of lazy, and so when he looks at you, one of the eyes isn't quite looking at you. And hi J, and Dave for some reason just uh, whenever he rolls a die and he sees the two ones for some reason he says hi J because it's like J is looking at him with his two eyes. I, I don't actually get it because that really, when I think about it now, what does that have to do with the lazy eye thing? I'm not quite sure, but for some reason that's stuck. And so that's what Dave says every time. The Welsh Bloke. Hi Matt, three questions. Feel free to skip any of them. With the imminent move to the bunker, what aspects of the new building are you looking forward to most? I'm looking forward to two things. One is after hours, having a place to game, having a local area place to game. Like there's Max Aggression in Niagara Falls, but it's like half an hour away. And when you have four kids, that's really far. Having a place where I can just go is, is nice and bring my son in the evenings would be nice. Two, it's just like during the day when I get like, when I just want to walk away from my desk, I like the idea that there's somewhere for me to walk to, and interact with some people, playing games or going to the store and look around and just have things to look at and take my mind off of work that I might be doing. So I, I'm looking forward to that the most. Two, when will you be taking bookings to the hotel or bunk rooms? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, we've got to move in, get everything settled, so it'll be a little while. Three, how did you take the news that you'll be getting an extra hour at home on a Sunday come January? Oh, you're talking about, so you, you must be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, just like me. Yeah, they just recently announced, because normally we go to church for three hours on Sunday, because there's like, there's just three different meetings, and they just got rid of one of those meetings, so that you have more time at home with your family. Not that it's not, not important to go to church as a member of the church, but they just felt that that one hour could be dropped. Um, I'm actually really I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, uh, not just because it's less time at church, but because I like the idea of focusing more on the, you know, doing more teaching opportunities at home with my family. Um, the announcement triggered a chorus of, what did he say, before they demanded that I show them how to rewind the stream. <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work, regards Thomas. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's really cool. I like it. Okay. Abaddon, 1312, two questions. The first being, when are you going to make Moon Clan content? Uh, like I said, we just started a Firestorm campaign and I'm playing Destruction. My very first game that I played, which is the first game that you'll see come out with it, is a mixture of Moon Clan Grotz and Iron Jaws, but you will see Moon Clan Grotz as well. The second, how does one get on at Mini Wargaming? Because all I need is a bed and food and I'll make all the content in our paint. Well, we, uh, and typically um, the people we hire are people that have come in here lots, like for example, Luca, Josh, Steve, Cork is the only exception. He was just like a normal hire where we put up a job post and he applied for it. We did interviews and then we hired him. But uh, pretty much everybody else, they've come in for narrative campaigns or they've come in on a regular basis just to come in and film battle reports with us. So they're locals. So we get to know them. We get to know their personality. And then when we do need somebody else, we offer them the job. Uh, so it's not very often that we offer the, where we like put up a job posting and then we take somebody that we've never met before because you really need to get them, you need to know them before you can decide if they're going to be one of the personalities for mini wargaming. All right, let's do one more because I have several phone calls there from my wife who's trying to get a hold of me and then I'll do the sit and vault after that. Uh, let's see. Hensh Hensehoff. Hensehoff. Hey Matt, I really enjoyed the storytelling and the RPG elements of your campaigns. Thank you. The one thing that bothers me is the rule sets you choose. Why do you use Age of Sigmar and 40k rules for skirmish sized games? There are a lot of good and dynamic rules for smaller scale games. You can easily adopt the Warhammer lore and models for most of them. I choose it because people are familiar with it. And it's nice when you're watching a video for you to actually understand the rules. I know I modify them, but the basic core rules are there. I agree, there are better games out there for skirmish. Um, but in this case, because the audience knows 40k and Age of Sigmar, that's what I choose. All right, thank you for your questions. Go ahead and click the link to go watch the Sit in Vault so that you can see me answer even more questions for our Vault members. Thanks. Happy working.